Hello, good evening. It's Thursday at seven o'clock. It's time for content of cocktails. How are you doing? A little bit late today. Three minutes. I was <laughs> a little bit of a technical hiccup, but we'll get on to that in a minute. How the devil are you? So um, here we are again. It's Thursday, part of the reboot. We're now into it. The reboot's happening, content of cocktails. So what is all this about? Why do I keep turning up here on a Thursday night talking about video? Well, I believe it's really important that uh, that I, with the knowledge that's in my head, I can give a little and I can help share some useful information around video marketing and video making. And that's what this live, this weekly live is all about. I'm a big fan of video. <laughs> yeah. As you may well expect, video has been a, you know, it's been my profession for 20, 20, yeah, 20, 21 years, actually, this year. And um, my uh, my sort of abiding love for the, the 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 medium and what it can do for businesses has been sort of my my lasting professional passion. <laughs> um, so this is a chance for me to turn up once a week and talk in depth about video, about the making of videos for your business, and then how you use those videos for business. Hello, Facebook user. Uh, who's this going to be? Let me have a look. It's Teresa. Hello, Teresa. How are you doing? I can see I've got a multi-screening here, so I can see lots of different, lots of different screens. Yeah, so, um, so this has been my, yeah, it's been my abiding passion, video, and I love turning up and and sharing a bit of a bit of know-how um if it helps you get either going with video or use your videos more effectively then i feel my my work is done hello facebook user good setup somebody says hello tom it's dr edie moore thank you very much yes i'm uh, i'm a little bit uh, a little bit flustered and sweaty this evening hello bev lovely to see you um so yeah, uh, this this evening we are we are sort of we're going to be talking YouTube. I've got YouTube on my mind at the moment for a couple of reasons. One, because I'm doing a lot of work on it myself, but also I've got my course launching, uh, the beta run through of of the um, uh, the group program YouTube Kickstart, and um, I am going to be sharing some tips and a bit of know how around around YouTube, hopefully shift your thinking a little bit about it. I've yet again today had a conversation with a client, a new client, as I was onboarding, uh, we were starting a project. And once again, the, the conversation went something like this. I said, oh, have you got a YouTube channel? And they went, yes. And then there was a moment's pause. And then there was that sort of thing like, and you said, but we don't really use it that much. If I had a penny for every time I've heard that, I would probably have at least two or three pounds and that's just this year so you know that's pretty good um so hello <laughs> danielle well, lovely to see you I haven't seen you here for ages uh hello i can see liz it's you uh who said even talk. yes so we're going to talk a little bit about about the old youtube which is one of those um uh um uh one of those um those platforms that i think f fills people with a little bit of fear a little bit of trepidation so before we get into that, we're going to we're going to quell those fears with a, with a little bit of a, a snifter, because this is, after all, content and, and cocktails. Now, this started out content and cocktails started out. Um, yes, Bev, I do. We will I will share because Bev and in fact, all Video Academy lot uh, get in on the course for free. Uh, so I will be shoveling all of them in whether they like it or not, frankly, <laughs> because it's really important. It starts. Um, I can tell you, Bev, it starts, um, God, I should know this off the top of my head. My brain is just like full of cream cheese. Uh, the 9th of August is when it starts. We, we like it, says Lee. <laughs> good. Well, I'm glad you do. But yeah, so uh, we like good. <laughs> Forcible education. Um, <clears throat> so, so the content part of it. We're talking YouTube tonight, though we're going to be um, uh, we're going to be talking um, the cocktails, and we are we have now, we've reached a momentous milestone because um, we we're going to do another circuit of Bernard. So we we finally a few weeks ago 
we finally completed Bernard. But I went through the first time in a very, very haphazard way. But what I'm gonna do is I am going to work through this book sequentially, alphabetically, from soup to nuts, as they say, uh, as they said in early 90, early uh, 20th century America. Um, we're going to we're going to work through Bernard's 100 cocktails. For those of you who don't know, this is my grandfather's cocktail book, uh, 1945 Madras. It says there, and it is in fact a war standard, a book production of the war economy standard. It says so. You know, um, we're going to be starting with A now. <laughs> Unfortunately, A uh, opens up a whole world of, of of hurts when it comes to cocktails that are sort of on on the menu so we're going to be starting with the absinthe cocktail now the, the thing i love about this cocktail book is that is it it gives a little bit of blurb and preamble um to all the cocktails it, it makes and it says three quarters fill a tumbler with broken ice and add the angostura bitters then put in the absinthe the anisette and the water shake well and pass through a strainer into a cocktail glass Serve with a dash of lemon. Oh, bugger, I've forgotten the lemon. I have to go out and grab the lemon in a second. <laughs> uh, serve with a dash of lemon peel juice on top and with a cherry. And this is the bit that I really like. For anyone who knows little of cocktails, this is an excellent one to try at the outset. And I love the fact that this is, you know, this absinthe cocktail is considered to be something of an amateur drink. Something for the, uh, for the kind of... Uh, the, the the early adventurer the low level adventurer <laughs> no it's not banned look it can't be banned because i've got some look it's fine no it's it's not banned um i think it was unavailable in this country for a while. i don't know the precise history of absinthe but i know it was uh, unavailable for a while but um uh yeah so i'm going to take a, a pause for a moment hold that thought I'm just going to go and get a lemon. there we go i'll return with a lemon so there we right let's um <clears throat> let's make this uh this horror show shall we okay so what does it require it requires a measure of absinthe so i i quite like the taste of absinthe i know it's not to a lot of people's taste but i sort of i rather i rather like it um we uh when we were uh, when i was in hungary i think we sort of indulged occasionally there might be a welcome back to this <laughs> yes look liz you can't uh you can't um you know you can't blame me for not wanting to continue without the right the right equipment that would be um monstrous of me so um Absent a dash of Angus Stewart. Oh, I need the ice as well. Oh, I feel very out of practice. This is ridiculous. Bit of ice. A dash of Angus Stewart bitters. Hello, Shirley. How are you doing? Dash of Angus Stewart's. I, I have a horrible feeling that this is going to be absolutely disgusting. The one thing that you can guarantee about um, the cocktails of Bernard is that. Um, about one in one in three is going to be virtually undrinkable and those of you who are long time viewers will um will be familiar with my oh god what's that face um which is uh really uh <laughs> something to behold see you may be in for a treat this evening in as much that some um, i'll be giving you my oh bernard face 
It's either an O oh, Bernard or a oh Bernard. For <laughs> either surprisingly nice or surprisingly nasty. Uh, a dash of lemon peel juice from top and a touch of water. Yeah, that's, that sounds sensible. Right. And like all, Shirley says, I've got a Bira Moretti on the go at the present. Molto bene. Give it a stir. Daniela says, I must have been lucky with the ones I chose in the book. Yes, of course, because you are, uh, you're Bernard enabled, aren't you? You've, um, how, how is Bernard working out for you? I forget, I completely forgot about that. We had the really weird situation. So Daniela won a prize um, on a challenge a few, well, this time last year, wasn't it? Um, and uh, uh, I, I uh, sent it out and a really, really weird thing happened. So I posted it from, from a, we were visiting our, our kind of uh, brother-in-law and his family in Wales and took it to the post office. And uh, when we, when I took it to the post office, the woman at the post office counter did this amazing sort of comedy Scooby-Doo double take when she was doing the, um, the address. And she was like, that's my old house. And so the, the person I was posting, uh, the post office I was posting for, the person who had the, who was at the post office was, used to live in the house that I was posting the prize to, which was bananas. Uh, Liz says, am I using melon tonight? I, <laughs> I attempted to use melon tonight, but it appears to be down, which is really, really annoying. I've been, I was trying to log into it because I spent a bit of time getting to know it uh, a little bit better and, uh, and found that it, um, it wasn't working tonight, just about, just as I was about to go live, which was really annoying. So, uh, cheers. So, step one of the, the return to Bernard. Bernard two, this time it's personal. Actually, that gets a Bernard thumbs up. Yeah. Cheers, everybody. Um, Mm. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. It's a good Bernard. I can highly recommend to those who are who are Bernard enabled, who are um, one hundred cocktails enabled, that I can recommend the uh, absinthe cocktail. I would hardly describe it as a beginner's cocktail, but um, but there you go. It's uh, something for the amateur. <laughs> so there we go. Right. Okay. On to serious stuff now. So. Um, YouTube. Why, why have I been banging on about YouTube? Now, some of you have took me up on my offer of the one-to-one -one done for you stuff, which is which is great. And um, so Shirley, for example, uh, who uh, said, gave me a cheers a second ago, we've been I've um, been working with her and a few other people on their one-to-one -one channel uh, setup. And whilst I was sort of um, uh, see you later, Liz. I can see Liz saying, I've got a dash for dinner. Enjoy. Um, the, uh, the reason we take a, um, we've, we've decided to take a long look at YouTube is because it presents the business owner with an awful lot of, of kind of valuable opportunities. But first of all, it's worthwhile just thinking about the, um, the the whys and wherefores. Where does the opportunity come from? Incidentally, if you fancy sharing this live anywhere, I'd be really very grateful. If you fancy getting my face all over the internet, um, please do share. The um, primarily, let's start to think about the platform. So YouTube. How is video different on YouTube to say Facebook or, or Instagram or LinkedIn? And fundamentally it's to do with, with how, we, uh, how we access the information. I mean, primarily it's because YouTube is a video platform, but it's, um, and, you know, it's a video first platform. 
there are other social elements to it, but but that's not how you know that's not why we go to to YouTube. But primarily, it functions in a in a, in a somewhat different way to the likes of Facebook and LinkedIn and and those other sort of social platforms. It's the difference between a a sort of a library and a, and a sort of fast flowing conversation. You you go into um, a library with a very usually with a very specific kind of um, sort of end goal in mind. You or you are going in there looking for a particular genre or type of information. And that's the way it generally tends to be with YouTube. You'll be going to it because you're thinking, oh, I, I want to be entertained or I want to learn something. Or you go there with a very, very specific question. Um, and so the way that YouTube curates its information is much more like a library. It's kind of organized in, in silos. You know, you've got you've got through the, um, the, the, the sort of means of, of tagging and, and titling, you've got a very uh, in, intelligent way of uh, you know google knows and youtube knows what um you know what the content's about and it builds pictures and profiles of the way you use the platform but also the way that the individual kind of users the creators use the platform and so it it is there to help you when you come to it with a question so for example in, in you know it's a an example I've used in recent months, you know, if I if I wanted to, I wanted to mend the dishwasher. So I went with with a really really specific question in mind: how to fix a particular brand of Zanussi dishwasher. As I like to have a tinker, as it turns out, it was a really easy mend. <laughs> so it just involved giving it a bit of a jiggle. But I wouldn't have known that if I hadn't asked the question. So I went with with a very serious, you know, with very clear intent to the platform. And I, and I kind of inputted my, my question and I got my answer. And that is, uh, you know, try doing that with Facebook and see what happens. For a start, you know, you'll get probably quite a confusing answer, but you might not get anything that's even remotely understandable. But with, because that's not the way Facebook operates. Facebook is a feed based platform as is LinkedIn. So there's a constant stream of information that sort of washes in front of our eyes. It's a much more sort of um, passive experience in some ways, whereas YouTube tends to be a much more search-based active experience. That's why YouTube is, you know, I, I don't know if this is still true, but it, I think it is. Um, it was for many years, it was described as the second largest search engine on the planet. And um, that's, that's what it does. And that's what it still does. It is there as a way for people to um, ask questions and get answers and the and, and, and that phrase a place where people can ask questions and get answers is really at the heart of this because we as content creators we want to be the people who are answering questions for people at the moment they ask them does that make sense just out of interest give me a Give me a sort of a heads up if you've got a YouTube channel. Yeah, I describe this. Uh, yes, who's that? Somebody says yes. Heidi, Heidi Felborg says, yes, hello. Daniela says, I sort of started one. That's another penny for me, I think. <laughs> um, the I've sort of started one is, I think I've told, I've told you this earlier in this, this broadcast, um, is, is one of the most commonly heard phrases I have around kind of um, around YouTube. Heidi says, yes. So Heidi, uh, would you describe, how would you describe your relationship with YouTube? Would you describe it as an active and ongoing one or or something that's kind of dormant, um, something that is um, uh, possibly one you haven't um, been to for a very long time? I think we're going to get 
dormant yeah i've been there myself it's 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 easy because i think you know and, it, and and this may sound familiar i think we're going to lose a bit of quality for a few minutes because i appear to have um, lost my internet signal for some reason um dormant is a status that a lot of people have with their channels and it's it's um it can be a it can be something that's with the right sort of tactics you can revive your channel and, and get it sort of zinging again because ultimately what we want from any marketing activity that we undertake for our business is for it to put money on the bottom line and we do that in a few different ways um you know we we want people to be um we want people to be finding us at the right moments yeah it's it's kind of yeah, so so that's really interesting. Had the best of intentions, but never quite understood how to take it further. Well, this is what my course is all about, actually. So I'm, I will I will share a link here because it now seems like an appetite time to do so. Um, so the YouTube channel Kickstart Group Program, which the beta, which I'm running in um, August and early September, is all about how to get your channel zinging, whether it's one that you don't don't have or one you're kind of ready to to revive because the um the really interesting part of of the sort of of all of of understanding youtube is a lot of the the magic happens with the um with the youtube algorithm because a big part of the process is um creating a channel that um uh, that is understood by the platform itself so that YouTube can then serve your content up to the right audience. And a big part of the course is all about deciding on the, the sort of zones you're going to kind of stick your, your flag into. Because when you're creating your channel, you need to have a very clear focus and you need to be serving um uh you need to be serving uh a defined audience really clearly and you do that through a um you do that through a, a process of first of all understanding your audience then understanding kind of what <laughs> then understanding what you do with that information you've got from your audience and use that to uh, craft a channel that's going to be of greatest use to the kind of clients that you would like to have. And that's a really important concept to get your head around. There's no point going onto YouTube and just kind of hosing content onto there and hoping that some of it is the right stuff. If you go in with a really specific kind of um, uh, strategy to understand the, um, the kind of uh the nature of what it is your audience wants and then very clearly serve that um that that need with the right kind of content and there's a lot more to it than that you know there's there's there's, there's kind of um quite a lot of sort of technical uh optimization work that goes around that but you are then going to be building a channel which serves a very clear audience and then over time people will start to find your content and find your content at a moment of need. And that can, that can happen very, very quickly because it's about clarity of, of purpose. And like in all things business related, if you have clarity of purpose and you, and you take action on that clarity of purpose, then you're, you're kind of, you're off to a flying start. And certainly that is the case with, with kind of, um, uh, with YouTube, you know, you, you'll be much more likely to find your audience if you are using a strategic approach. And it's not just about finding the audience, it's about finding the audience at a moment that uh, where they require your help. So very often it's about meeting up, matching up um, the most commonly asked question that you have, but in a very specific way. Um, Hello, Antonia. Lovely to lovely to, uh, to to have you here. Well, I look forward to 
to to to entertain you with a with with uh, with my presence tomorrow but uh, hopefully we're you can probably skip the first 10 minutes because it's all you know me just blathering about cocktails um but um yeah getting if you know about 10 minutes in you'll get to the good stuff <laughs> shirley thank you so much so shirley says i've already had my first kickstart session so shirley is a one-to-one -one client for kickstart for youtube kickstart the group program starts on the 9th of august and we'll be taking you through the process, but it's it's going to be a it's going to be a um, a really highly actionable course. So this is all about getting you started and getting you started in the right way with YouTube, or taking an existing channel and and getting the you know reviving it, sort of bringing it back to life. Um, but essentially it is it is a platform that is well worthwhile exploring if for no other reason it is you don't want to sort of cede that potential real estate to somebody else in your space do you i mean that the the sort of competitive angle here is is um is certainly worth considering even if, i'm not a very competitive person but i don't like the idea of of kind of people missing out so um uh somebody says Heidi says when are you run it again i've got exams um so i will be running it again probably early next year because we're going to be so just for clarity we've got we've got um uh youtube kickstart the beta run through which is going to be a sort of a lower cost um version of the course just because i want to you know it's a it's a test and measure thing so we're going to be it's 300 is it 350 i think yeah, it's 350 quid. That's including that. So it's an absolute steal this time around. Um, uh, we've got some exciting signups all, already for it, but it is, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a bargain because I want, I want to get the evidence of you guys going through it and, and sort of getting the benefits on going through it. So I can then use testimonials from you, <laughs> frankly, to run it again, but you know charge a bit more um so yes we'll be running it early next year but then we'll be we're launching um video academy three in um uh it's gonna be mid-october uh no early october so um yeah so it won't be until won't be until next year that we will be we're we'll running the um so you see it going on we're running that again um but yes yeah, so, i so, was so talking about um about seeded space so like i've been saying you will see a lot of people set channels up and just leave them and it, it feels like there's a lot of uh a lot of money left on the table I won't lie, YouTube is not, it's not a quick, it's not a super quick win. It can, I say that, it can be. You can get, you can, if you get, if the if the planets align and the wind gets behind you in the right way, it can be quite quickly. But um, it's worth exploring mostly because many people in your, in your sort of field will either be just not on there or they will be on there in a really, really half-baked way. And so if you can, as part of your visibility work, you know, we, we all need, you know, what's, what's the one thing that we can guarantee that we can do that gets more people to buy our stuff? It's a really, really straightforward thing. You know, if more people see you and more people know about what you've got, then there is a greater chance that more people will buy from you so given that youtube is such an important video platform and it's a visual medium what a great way to get visible on a place with a huge audience which has got where, where there is a and i say easy where there is a clear way to connect ideal audience intent with your content so there's an easy way to get visible with not just like any old Tom, Dick and Harry, but precisely the right people. 
yeah exactly daniela there we go <laughs> We, we we know it's exactly this is you, know, you 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 build an audience and this is part of audience building so there we go hit me with any questions i'm kind of in a q a kind of mood no you weren't late at all you were you were uh oh, you, were, you were not late you were precisely when you were meant to be was it a wizard is a wizard is never late he arrives precisely when he's supposed to Um, uh, yes, so hit me with some YouTube questions if you fancy it. Uh, I have a that was, I have to say, Bernard did well this time around. That was a good cocktail. Well done, Bernard. So I'm looking at the, um, this is an excellent question. So there's a couple of ways you can approach this, but either way, consistency is the is the key here i would aim for and this is going to sound a little scary but we will get to this we will get to how you can do this easily i would aim for once a week but if you can when you're starting a channel and you're revving it up if you can and this is this is by no means by no means um kind of uh um something that is right for everybody in fact i guarantee you that me saying this will fill you full of fear but don't let it because it's probably not right for you in this case surely some people recommend once a day when you're starting for the first 30 to 40 days because what you're doing in that 30 to 40 days and this is particularly true for, for completely new channels um uh they're saying that because it is about teaching youtube which spaces you operate in um so imagine the uh uh imagine sort of your blank slate of your channel when you start your when you start your youtube up youtube needs to build a picture and understand who your channel is for so you're gonna um you know you can either educate youtube slowly or you can educate edu educate educate youtube quickly um and that is um that is entirely down to choice and time if you want faster results i would say go in really hard for about 30 to 40 days and just blitz it go in with questions you know question focused q a stuff that's going to serve your potential audience really really clearly so that youtube gets a very very clear picture of who you are helping and we go into this in great detail in the um in the youtube kickstart course down below you'll see um and you'll we'll, we'll sort of work, work out how you identify your sort of your your zones of interest for your channel um, because YouTube will, once it gets an understanding of, of how it, um, of how, of who you're serving. So, you know, it will then start to not only show its channel to people, your channel and content to people it thinks are going to be interested in that kind of thing. It will also then test out other audiences on YouTube. So it'll go, okay, well, you know, say for example, you're a, you're an artist and you've got, maybe you, maybe you're sort of into, um, uh, kit reviews maybe your channel does kit reviews and um live paintings or speed paintings or whatever and so it will go okay you've done an in-depth kit review for for this particular piece of of of, of artistic equipment 
this new paint, new paints or brushes or whatever. And it will look at it and go, okay, so we know that this is for people who are interested in, in art supplies and kind of artistic, you know, painting or you know, whatever. And it might go, okay, so this content might be right for somebody who is interested in um, something associated with that. They might be, you know, they might expose that video then to people who are interested in watercolor. So it will test out different audiences within the platform. And sometimes you get very lucky. But if you are putting more content up there earlier, it, you, you're teaching YouTube what it is that you do. And it sort of builds an understanding and a picture of your channel and who your channel serves. So frequency, be regular, but if you can go in a little bit heavier at the start, then do. So there we go. So would you use YouTube for how to, how to videos? 100% yes. YouTube is essentially a how-to platform at its best. It is there, you know, think about how you search on YouTube. A lot of people go there to ask questions. A lot of people go there to have um, uh, sort of um, information uh, sort of needs met. So I quote my um, washing machine, my tumble, my tumble dryer, Jesus, dishwasher problem. So I went and asked the question, how to fix a Zanussi so-and-so, so-and-so, enter. And the answers come up. And you get your you get your answers to that. So people go to YouTube and use it like a search engine, but also, just as importantly, Google shows YouTube results. So um, so if you go if you, you know if you go to Google, yeah, Shirley says. I use YouTube all the time, Pad. Absolutely. So if you put your how to search, so how do I uh, fix a Zanussi dishwasher? How do I fix my Zanussi? Yeah. So I'm looking at the, I'm, I've just done a quick Google search and one, two, three, there are four video um, uh, results. And those are, the, two of those are above the fold on the, um, on the browser. So yeah, uh, you know, YouTube is at its best when it's a how-to thing. So you've got to think about your audience. What question is your ideal audience asking and how can you answer it? Because then that's the point where you get the kind of, if you have a properly sort of, um, uh, kind of, um, meshed up audience and um uh <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that question in a minute kathy um so you you want to mesh up an audience with a need with your content and it's that it's that sort of um is youtube suitable for life coaches yes absolutely because there are going to be people out there, real human beings with real needs and real problems that you have the answer to. And if you can have an answer that meets the questioner's need, and if you can optimize your content, um, uh, uh, if you can kind of uh, opt, you know, get your content to to um, to mesh up with the, the need through the optimization and all the things you do that's where the opportunity to bring somebody into your world lies because if you are the person who is answering that question at that moment at that precise moment because if somebody has come onto youtube or google and is asking a question like that then there is a genuine need. And if you can be the person ask, answering that question with, with kind of, with real value, that is when you have that opportunity to build a standing with that person, to do that no like, trust thing. 
<laughs> Antonio says, it sure helped me with my glassy, glassy Ferrelli boiler when it broke. Yes, indeed. It's things like that. You know, it's not just about when bits of kit break down. It's when other things in life need a bit of help. So how would you tag the video to be picked up by people looking for... Well, there's a whole research process that goes into that, um, which is, um, uh, you know, sort of part of the part of the kind of the research process. So that, you know, that's the kind of the tagging process. You want to be, you know, tags aren't as important as they used to be. Tags used to be really important on YouTube, but now they're not quite so important because YouTube, uh, you know, the, the sort of the machine learning aspects of, of the kind of Google platforms and YouTube, the ability to actually understand what the video is about is it's quite profound um but also it's descriptions and titles and those kind of things where you're going to be bringing some serious optimization kind of thinking to bear on your content so that um if you are a person looking for help with a zanussi product the video has been optimized and i use optimized because that's sort of catch-all for all the things you do around around the video, both from kind of the video file itself, the file you upload to YouTube, there's things you can do to that file itself to get sort of meta, sort of create metadata around in the, the actual, you know, hard file, all the way through to the stuff you do on YouTube, the platform itself. I understand, I knew what you were talking about. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think life coaching would work. You know, we can see it works. Look, if <laughs> it's like check out Tony Robbins, does it work? You know, admittedly, Tony Robbins has got significant brand recognition, but uh, um, life coach, you know, there are plenty of life coaches who make good, uh, you know, good use of YouTube. Now, the one thing I would say is that if you are setting up and you are in a competitive space and there are ways you can work out how to find whether your space is competitive um which we won't go into here but um because that's a whole other thing um you then want to find out what the niches are and so some of the interesting work that we're doing with shirley is that because the sort of um the health and fitness and sort of space and well sort of physical well-being space is highly competitive so one of the things we're looking for are those niches where we can leverage search and leverage audience requirements to bring people into shirley's world um so that we can then have other conversations but there you look you're looking essentially for the easiest way in for people Daniela says, how would I record with the ability to share to screen share? How do you mean? Are we, are we talking? Um, are, are you talking about? So this, for example, this live is going out onto YouTube, but but I but I I wouldn't recommend. So I for the content we're talking about, we're talking about pre-records. What you can do is repurpose your lives. So how would I record with the ability to, to, to screen share? So you can screen share on, on this on this platform. Oh, well, well, I mean, so for example, so Daniela, okay, right. Um, so if you're doing screen share content, just use a platform like, like this, like StreamYard. You can do screen share content on here. You can then download the file, edit it, and then upload it to YouTube so because i can so if I, you know, like i can i can share my screen um here it's going to be weird there we go it's me sharing a screen so i can point to things and look it's there we go so i'm sharing my screen yeah I mean, to take a look at StreamYard. It's a, it's a really easy way to do it. Um, yeah, 
there's, I mean, there's plenty of other options, but this is this is one way that you can do it. And you can also do you know do it live <laughs> if you want as well. So Facebook says Antonia says I regularly get offered super helpful content I haven't searched for, but I have spoken about at home. So, yes, and this is it. So um, this is a really really good point that Antonia is making. You have a um, uh, so YouTube has understood who you are and what you're interested in. And then it goes, I think I know what Antonia's looking for. I'm going to share with her this video that I think she'll find interesting. And you log into the YouTube, you, you, you go, get in your browser and you go, oh, our video looks interesting. I wonder how it knew. And it knows because it looks at everything you do and goes, I know you. I bet you'll love this. And very often it does. It gets it right, which is the, the joy of living in an information-rich, data-driven world. I was thinking about how to respect. Yeah, absolutely. No, I think that would work really, really well. <laughs> Hello, Scott. No, no, we're still going. We're still going. Gosh, that was uh, that was my one win for the day. Sore feet. So yes, good. In one simple clock. <laughs> good. I'm. 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 Uh, I'm glad. Yes. So. That, so. So that really is. That's the incredible thing about this is that YouTube is sort of building a picture of you as a user, and this is this is the this is the data driven world we live in. You know, you are with every search you make, they'll be watching you. Um, uh, and um, sorry. <laughs> I don't know why that uh, why that popped into my head, um, uh, and but they are. This is it. That that you know, YouTube as a platform is is looking at you and uh, um, understanding what you're interested in, what your search patterns are like. I mean, poor old YouTube doesn't know what to do with me because the kids a lot. And this is the same for a lot of people with with kind of young families. You'll find that unless you have a dedicated um, account of your own what happens is that you know Oren or astrid go in and 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 search for stuff because i've got youtube um premium which i can highly recommend actually um youtube premium so they don't we don't get the ads but so they they use my account on on the tv and whatever so the the algorithm goes what are you interested in it appears to be a combination of video production uh minecraft videos uh nasa um uh, the most amazing guy called Colin, my, my son, there's a YouTuber called Colin Furs. He's Lincolnshire's finest uh, crazy inventor. I would recommend going and checking out Colin Furs. He's pleasingly bonkers. Mark Rober, that's another popular one in our household. Um, and, but then my daughter sort of, my daughter kind of completely skews it as well by, by sort of bringing in all what, what some channels that I look at and go, I, I am just... I'm too old for this. There's one called Afmal, which is basically just it's, it seems to be Minecraft videos, but whenever I whenever she's watching it, it's just there's a lot of screaming. It's a lot of a lot of screaming. So the the YouTube algorithm goes, I don't know, I give up, I don't know what you're interested in. <laughs> and so um it just recommends a whole bunch of different things to me, a lot of a lot of which are just completely hopelessly inaccurate um so yeah we've we've as a, as a household we've sort of we've kind of broken the algorithm i think scott says been teaching for four weeks give me video production any day well yeah so I, oh, what are you teaching i want to know what you're teaching scott i love bonkers people indeed i do too you're in hey Fabulous. I, how very exciting. I've, um, let me just, oh, let me just, oh, very nice. Looks, it's a, you've, uh, the, the old dream inspires. Fabulous. 
Sarah, so Sarah is has joined the YouTube Kickstart. How very exciting. This is wonderful. So uh welcome aboard, Sarah. How lovely to have you on. Finished warrant business. Well, okay. So yeah, your precise area of uh, expertise indeed. Has it been enjoyable? I bet it has. I love Oxford. I really love Oxford. We did, this is going back a very, very long time. One of the first big commercial jobs we did was um, with, uh, um, uh, it wasn't Oxford, it was with uh, Oxford Brooks and it was with the uh, widening participation. And we did a tour of um, about seven or eight South universities in the southwest, and myself and my first business partner, George, basically toured around the southeast of England for the summer. Um, uh, in a in a my <laughs> at the time, I was driving a little white van, it was like, um, you know, it was like only fools and horses a little bit. <laughs> uh, we toured the southeast and uh, made videos for for um, widening participation. And it was great. It was at summer schools. It was it was such good fun, and I met lovely people. And that was the first. That was our first big job that we had as a as a kind of um, as a company. Well, as a as a as a because we myself and George had met uh, doing a a job at um, with a guy called John Trace, and uh, George had been offered this job over the summer. He said it's too big for me to do on my um my own and that's how I, that's how we sort of started off in, in business and you know continued for many years until george uh jumped ship um because he realized he didn't want to be a business owner he wants to be a director and the reality is when you're running your own business there's a lot of boring stuff to do <laughs> St. Hughes college nice and then ice hockey indeed so mike uh mike lane who is uh like going by the name emily kingston um but mike is somebody who i've known literally since the very start of my life our uh our, our kind of our, our childhood was was spent uh well knocking about in each other's houses basically wasn't it um but yeah ice hockey league uk Man, oh man, that was hard. But that's a story for another time. There are some you know, stories that we can tell about that, about Ice Hockey League UK, um, which are probably best not committed to um, uh, to, to to film because they are certainly accurate, but sound quite slanderous. <laughs> We've got all the evidence, but. Uh, um, uh, yeah. Oh, excellent. Oh, good. I was going to ask you, Scott, about uh, about this. So, Artifact Live. Scott has got an excellent, an excellent live show, um, which has been fantastic. Uh, some truly, uh, truly incredible guests. I mean, you know, some, you know, people, really amazing people, and uh, and me. <laughs> So it says having camera. Oh dear. Oh no. Is what as in kind of um you your camera is is uh um not working or you are <laughs> oh the Sony, apart from the bit where I thought I was dead on the air and I <laughs> I dropped a few F bombs in a very uncharacteristic way. I was having, uh, I'd been on Scott's show and um, my uh, um, <laughs> my cameras weren't working, basically. And uh, it all went dead. I was like, <laughs> let us see. The Scott was like, uh, your camera's dead, but the sound is fine. It's like, I'm so sorry. Right. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna wind we're gonna wind things up now because I've got some children who need to need to be um, 
uh, encouraged to go and wash and get ready for bed. Um, and they are currently running wild as Una is out uh, Una's out filming horses this evening um, for uh, for her work. So she she is currently working for a lovely place called the Mare and Foal Sanctuary. And uh, you know what? She's met John Nettles. She's got she's got John Nettles' uh, um, phone number because he's like he's the patron for the charity. Very nice man. Very nice man. Uh, but so yeah, she's been touched by greatness. Touched, you know, Bergerac. Anyway, um, yes, let's. We'll. I'll be now. Look, I'll. I'll give you a heads up on what's what's the the cocktail next week. So we started this week with the um, with the absinthe cocktail, alphabetically. Oh yikes! I'm gonna. Have to, you see, every now and then I look at these and go, I've got to go and spend about sixty quid on booze to do these. But next week is the Adam's apple cocktail. Um, uh, a measure of Calvados, half a measure of Italian vermouth, half a measure of gin, two dashes of yellow chartreuse, lemon peel juice, cherry, and a tumbler full of broken ice. And it, <laughs> again, we get a bit of a Bernard. Um, uh, we get a bit of Bernard um, sort of uh, sort of character and colour being given to the cocktail. Uh, it, it just it just has a sentence at the end. A fairly strong cocktail. Now, given that uh, Bernard has described the absinthe cocktail I've had this evening as, for anyone who knows little of cocktails, this is an excellent one to try at the outset. I can tell you, this is the one I've had this evening is very much a one-off cocktail because it, it, it <laughs> packs quite a punch. But yeah, Adam's apple next week. Um, so describes it as fairly strong. So we'll see how we go. Well, folks, that was Content of Cocktails. If you have enjoyed it and uh, you fancy more of this nonsense, I'll be here this time next week for more of the same. Um, but also, if you fancy joining my YouTube course, it's five weeks of highly actionable, enjoyable, uh, kind of data-driven fun to have with, have with YouTube. We are going to be, if you are somebody who has a YouTube channel that is, uh, out there, but maybe not not very loved. This is for you, but it's also for you if you if you want to get going with YouTube and use it as a way to to get more business. So that's it. Thank you for being here with me this evening. It's been lots of fun as always. I will uh, I will see you next week. Take care and have a fabulous rest of the week.